Hey guys, and welcome to game number 73 out of 100 of the Mac vs. Machine series, where I'll be playing 100 games of Scrabble against the top online bot, HastyBot. We're currently sitting at 45 and 27, so just six games away from clinching the series, and hopefully we can get one game closer today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're first, and kind of a Val heavy rack, two E's, two O's, and an I. We may want to exchange here. I don't see any particularly long words here. I mean, if we could play like a five letter word, getting the H on the double letter, that would be worth it for sure to score 24 points, but I don't see that. I don't think it's worth it to play something like Oho here. I mean, you could. It does at least score 12 points. E-E-I-N is just a bit too vowel heavy though. I feel like you're better off just exchanging. There's also Ho keeping E-I-N-O. It's probably pretty close between playing and exchanging here. I don't see any word that actually gets rid of three vowels. So yeah, I think I'm going to exchange five, just keep E-N. I think for only 12 points, I'd rather keep a more balanced leave and not give him anything to work with. Okay, well, we unfortunately picked up five vowels after exchanging from five vowels. However, he also exchanged. So I guess we could exchange again. I mean... Again, we, we have words. We could play like OI for four, but you're like you're definitely better off just exchanging OI than playing OI for four because this gives him back easy overlaps. And like if he drew the Q or the X, he's just going to score 40 very easily. So I think... Yeah, I think we probably should just exchange two or three again. So we definitely want to trade OI. I kind of think... I think I'm gonna just do that because if we can draw one constant, then we'll be very likely to bingo or at least have an eight. Like I feel like our bingo percentage is higher enough keeping the three vowels that it's better to do that. So just since our leave is much more well developed with like A E I N T is a lot stronger than E I N. So like that's I think enough of a difference to justify keeping the three vowels here, whereas before I only kept E N. Okay, and this is gonna work because we drew into May as a seven. We also have anti mine through one of the ends. So that might be better, actually. So anti-mine is 68. Intime, which I guess is going to go here, is 70. So intime is a couple more. They both give back a lot of floating tiles to bingo through for eights. Intime also gives back this spot. If he pulled a K or something, or even like an H or a W, he's going to score a lot there. This spot under the I in intime could potentially hurt us, especially if he pulled an F. So it may be worth giving up the two points to play anti-mine just because it doesn't give back any big hot spots. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so he bingos back with Carotin. So he does bingo back. And we have an interesting rack here. C-H-I-I-L-M blank. Oh, we have a really funny looking seven of Milchig for 80. Not a word. I don't know if I've ever even played this word. Wow. Doesn't come up often at all. But that's got to be the right play. I mean, unless, unless there's something that scores more through this N? I don't think so. Almost inch meal. There's chiliasm through this A. I'm pretty sure that's good. I, mean, I know chiliad and chiliasm. I'm pretty sure chiliasm is, is good too. Like this. But that's only 72. So milchig is definitely better. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play this. I don't see anything better. All right, that's a lot of points. He scores 60, and we've got a good game here. We're down four points. Not a great rack, but we'll at least be able to score. We could definitely, at the minimum, have gravy. That's 33. NUI, not a great leave, but definitely not horrible. It feels like it's going to be tough to do better than that. We've got a V, a U, and two Ys. Maybe, is there anything through this Y, through this I, like starting with a V, I? Vinery, not good like that. I don't think so. Oh, there's also Kirby, though. That is actually probably better. Because it's, it scores one more than Gravy, and A, N, Y is so much better than U, N, Y. Yeah, we do leave this G open, which is the drawback, but it's also a blank G, so it's not that easier for him to score a lot of points with it. I think I'm going to go ahead and play Kirby. Okay, so he plays Flowey, and I'm just going to go ahead and slap down Kintar for 70, because that's clearly going to be the best play. And he bingos back with Garrison, so very exciting game so far. We do still have a small lead. Gooey looks really good. 
41 points. DT is a pretty good leave, especially with a lot of ease unseen in the pool, which uh, you can see over here on the right. So this has a pretty good chance to turn into a bingo or at least a, a pretty solid rack. I just, I mean, it's 41 points. I just don't see how we're going to do better than that by any stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. And he bingos again. Wow. Really turning into a, a crazy game. He's got four bingos already. No, just three bingos. Three bingos for him, two bingos for us. But we also played Kintar for a lot. So, all right, we are now down about 40. We're down 42. Kind of an awkward draw here. Double Ds, double Es, and double Ts. So, what do we do about that? We could play, like, Tweed. I'm a little concerned about how exhausted this board is getting. And what I mean by that is, like, a lot of the board has already gotten sort of taken up. Like, if I draw a big red square around this whole area over here, like, everything within this red box is kind of used up. Like, there's just not really anywhere to play a long word or a bingo that still fits in this area because all the space has been exhausted. So this is a theme you'll see sometimes on boards with a lot of long words. It's like, even though you're bingoing a lot, you're actually sort of playing defense, not by specifically closing down lines. Like you might think of playing defense more generally. Like you'll think someone opens a line and the other player who's ahead tries to just shut down the line with a small play. Sometimes when both players just keep bingoing and playing long words, it actually indirectly plays defense like this by closing down a lot of space. And like, if you think about it on this part of the board, there really aren't a lot of places to bingo. There's like this A, but you have to bingo in a very specific spot. There's this I, which is also pretty tough to start with. And then there's the floaters through porgies, but that's about it. So given we're down 40, we, we do need to be careful of that and just make sure that there's enough space for us to bingo or do whatever we're going to need to do to come back. And I guess the question then is, do we need to bingo to come back? So there's tweet. There's also tweeted for more. I'm a little concerned about the pool. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we really don't want to draw. There's three U's. There's a V. So it's, it feels like it's going to be kind of tricky to come back. There's not a great way to score. I'm a little hesitant to play tweeted because I feel like there's a lot of high point tiles. There's obviously the Z, the X, F, H, V, K. I'm just giving him an easy 40 point play. So many times there's going to completely put the game out of reach. So these are whited or tweed. So if I play tweed, I'm down one, down 20. The problem is D, E, T on this board. It's like, unless I draw something through this A, which again, is hard to do because the A has to be in exactly the third spot. It's just going to be kind of hard for me to score. Like, I think my position is actually deceptively bad here. I just don't know what else I should really do to open it. I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm down enough to try something like tweeted just because I don't, I still don't want to give him back an easy big play to put this game out of reach. Like, I feel like I can probably still afford to be a little patient and just play tweet, especially if he gets a bad draw. Like he could easily have picked up two using a V here. And I could still be in good shape. So I probably should do this and just kind of hope he got a tough draw. All right, so he plays was. And not a great rack for us. We do pick up the X, but a lot of clunky stuff to go with it. Don't have dits or anything to this D, unfortunately. I'm still down like 45 points. I can't really hit this spot because I don't have a G or, or an O or an I to go next to this G. So that would be a nice, easy 40 points or so. It's actually a fairly vowel-heavy pool. There's 15 vowels and 12 consonants. So that's interesting to keep in mind. So maybe just advect. Try to draw. If I pull an I or an O, I can play something like ticks next to Garrison and maybe start catching up. The T is good to keep, so if I draw like putts or futs or dits back, I can hit this Z for a good score. And there aren't, the nice thing is there aren't a lot of words he can actually have. Like the T is a very useful tile for a four ending in a Z. And there really is actually almost nothing he could have. He could have like fizz, P-H-I-Z, but that's about it. So I'm definitely the favorite to hit that Z. So I think I don't need to panic here. If I can just do this, try to hit the X and try to hit the Z, then I'm going to catch up. 
Okay, so he plays Pulau. And now I probably want to just play Box. I don't think I can... I still can't hit this Z. But again, I definitely want to keep that T. It's a very good tile for hitting that. I could also just play Ox and try to save the B. Because the one thing with Box is it does give back high scoring plays. But I guess... I mean, he could have like Ed. He's probably going to play something like Ed. What's that? 27? 20... Yeah, 26 actually. But I think it's still better to play Box. Because if not, he there's still a B and an F on C. He could just play Box or Fox and score even more. This also gives me another tile I'm drawing to pull a D or something to hit a Z play. So I think I like Box here. And he plays Guide down there for a lot. Unfortunately, you're still not hitting this Z. So four left, I'm down 34, okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna really need to hit this Z. I could score well with Ab, that's 30. That gets me to within four, and it leaves two in the bag, which is good. It doesn't empty the bag, so it doesn't give back full information on what's left. If I can draw the D, I think I'm in really good shape because I'll hit Dits. And I, I do need to score points here, and I just don't see another good way to score points. And I do like leaving two in the bag. Like, I don't want to play a longer word like Takahi over here, because it also gives back a big scoring play. If he, if he has the F and plays something like Fond, the game is completely over. So I don't think I want to do that. I guess I maybe have stuff here, but not really. I mean, I have, like, Cab, but that scores so much worse. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Ab. I mean, if he... Especially if I draw the S, and if he's a little bit Val-heavy, I think I could pull back in this endgame. But it's going to be close. Let's see. Alright, so I've got three minutes to look through this. It's going to be very close, I think, here, guys. So I still never drew anything to this Z. So I'm down 24. He's got A-A-E-L-N-S. So is he going out? Probably not. Oh, he is. He's got sealant over here. Huh, okay. Hmm, so I have to block that. I don't imagine there's any way I can outrun. I'd be shocked. I mean, I have, I have a nice play of Ho over here. That's 30. So can I, okay, how about can I block sealant and save that? I have to play kite. I can play kiter, but that's going to probably give back big plays. Oh yeah, that gives back alkanes. I can't do that. Uh, okay, how about... What if I try to save something here? Like Dyke or Deek? So can I play Thio or Other? How about Other? No, it gives back Sealant. Huh. Uh, Doeth doesn't fit, unfortunately. Okay. So what's he going to score if he... Uh, he's going to play something with Tweeds. Okay, so his best play is probably... S-A-N and Tweeds is my guess. Unless it's something with Advect. So 9, 10, 12, 16, 17, 19 for that. 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 14, 16, 18. But that probably gives me back more. Okay, so like 19 for that. 54. So I'll, that puts me down 43. I'll be getting 6 from him. I need to net like 37 while blocking Sealant. Okay, that's going to be tricky. Uh, how about like K-E-I-R or something? Then where am I going out with T-E-H-O? <sighs> hmm. I can't put... Oh, how about... Wait. How about this? Setting up Keto in there. And then... Okay, what if I do that? And then if he... So if he just plays San, I think I win, right? So 15, 26, I'm down 9. So if he plays like... Oh, but he can play Leas over here, like L-E-A-S and Advects. But I have Token there, so okay, so hold on. So 15, 26, down 9, L-E-A-S, 5, 6, 7, 12, 16, wait, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 14, 16, 18, that is? So down 27. I need 23. Shoot, I'm not getting that. I'm losing by 2? Damn it. I think that loses by 2. I mean, I just don't see, I'm down to 30 seconds, I just don't see another way to score more. I 
yeah, I don't know. I don't see it, guys. I mean, maybe, maybe how about something like here? OE? How about like OE setting up Kite? No, that's not going to be enough. Uh, hike? How about OE setting up Hike? Does that do it? Maybe that's enough. I have no idea. I'm going to try this. Yeah, it's not enough, is it? Wait, we tied! Oh my god. Wow. Uh, okay. Did, he probably should have just blocked. Yeah, he, he definitely should have just blocked. But like, how, how could he have blocked? Wait, is that not blockable? Hold on. Wait. Because he, I know he didn't have anything to hook OE, but couldn't he have just like, yeah, I like totally missed Nasal and Ansei too. I, I just wasn't really thinking about how much he could score there. But like, can he not block this? Hold on. What if he just plays Says? So if he just plays Says, but then do I just go out with Kyth and win? Hold on. So if he had played Says, that's 12. He's up 33. No, 32. Sorry. He's up 32 after Says. He has A-A-L-N, so that's 8. I'd need 24. Kyth is 16... 26. Holy cow. I would have won by 2 if he played Says. But what if he just plays like... If he had just played, like, A-N over here, then he probably wins. Yeah, I think he just wins if he if he plays, like, A-N. So that's probably what he needed to do. But, yeah, I mean, Hasty, of course, HastyBot does not take this into account with endgames, right? It's not going to think about what I have and what I'm threatening. But, yeah, I think just A-N probably wins, because then I can't... I don't think I have another spot for Kyth. And I don't really have another way to score. And he's just going to be going Al next turn. So yeah, if he had just played like Al or Ann, he would have won. But like, if we go back, I, I just don't think... Yeah, I mean, obviously, none of these plays are going to work, because he just goes out with Sealant. I'll put this into Quackle in a, in a second. But yeah, I was looking at, like, something like this. But the problem is, again, if, if I try to save a play down here, then he's just going to play Nasal. Which, I, I don't know why, I didn't even see Nasal or Ansa. I was just looking at San. But yeah, given that, I feel pretty confident I'm dead here if he plays correctly. Because, yeah, I mean, I just, like, I can't score enough points here. I mean, if he play, if he gets down Nasal, like, I, I absolutely have to go here. Because I can't outrun Sealant in one shot. If he goes out with Sealant, he definitely wins. So yeah, if I, if I block here, he's getting Nasal, that's... 18, 19, 21, 2, 3, 28. So that'll put him at 463 with only two points left on his rack, which I'll be getting. So I need to get 50 points in two turns while blocking this. I mean, that's that's just not going to happen. I, I can't imagine. Unless there's some other crazy setup I'm missing. Like, I this almost works. But I think this actually just loses to Nasal. Right? Because that's 15... I mean, he can obviously just block, which is what he should probably do. But yeah, if he just plays Nasal, because Keto would be 21, 2, 6, 7. Yeah, that would still lose by 6. So that doesn't even work. So I'm pretty confident. I'm going to put this into Quackle, but I'm pretty confident I can't win here if he plays this correctly. And yeah, after OE, this is probably my best try. There's also OI setting up Ket. But does, does that actually do me any better? I don't think so, because I, I still don't have another out. So either way, I think he just needs to block this, which he, he somehow didn't do. Although, oh, I, you know, come to think of it, guys, this this might have actually won <laughs> in this case, because Ket scores more points, because I'm doubling the K as opposed to the H, right? With Hike, I put the H on that A12 square. But with OI, I'd actually be putting the K there and getting Ket, which would be more points. So actually, against HastyBot, I think OI would have won. Of course, against a human. Now, see, now says would work because now I don't have Kite to go out. So now says works. And in addition to that, still just playing like AN or something like that should do the trick. But I think against HastyBot... In the same fashion that I tied, I would have actually won if I played OI. <laughs> That's nuts. 
Yeah, I feel pretty confident, guys, that I can't win this endgame with, with optimal play from my opponent, but OI against Hasty Bot may have actually induced him to lose rather than tie. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. I mean, even against a human, definitely doing something like this is absolutely the right play because they're much more likely to make a mistake like trying to block this or not realizing they have to block than they would be to miss miss a play with tweeds or, or miss an outplay of stealing. So like this is still absolutely the best play against a human if you want to maximize your chances of stealing the game. Probably OE just so that if they try with, to block with Sez, you can go out with Kaith. But I don't know, this is chaotic. Wow, okay, let's let's look at this in Quackle. One second, guys. Okay, so we wanted to look at this position here where I played OE. And is there is there any way for me to win if he plays optimal? Like, I, I don't think so. Just given that Nasal and Tweed score so much and he can block any setup I make. But let's see what Champ says. No. Yeah, okay, so air is actually optimal. Interesting. Because it is at least an out and two, right? So if he blocks... Yeah, this does this does lose by three, and that's that's what I thought because I thought he was gonna play like Le Leas or something, L E A S and Advects. Oh, he should actually just play Nasal. Okay, so he should actually just play Nasal and let me have Keto. But I was correct at least. I saw that this was gonna lose by two because now I have to just go out with Token there, and yeah, he wins by two. I did see this during the game. That was the first thing I considered was Air, and it's technically the best end game for me if he plays optimally, but. There is, as we as we just saw, there is no available win if Hasty Bot were to have played this endgame optimally for me, whether I play Air or OE or anything else. So so yeah, once again, Air would have been my best against an optimal opponent, losing by three. Kier uh, is significantly worse, just because it's probably not easy for me to go out with EH, OT, and yeah, there's really just not much else. Uh, this is a fun play here. Hottie through the T and the I keeps EIK. So I guess the idea... Oh, I see. So the idea with either Kier or Hadi is that I'm going to go out with the other play next turn. That's cool. But yeah, again, it falls short. It's uh, I needed 50 points to outrun Nasal, and I'm only getting 39, right? Because Hadi is 21 and Kier is 18, so that's going to lose by 11. So yeah, there's really nothing here. I mean, OE is far from optimal if he plays correctly, but we'll see here. I think all of his winning plays involve like a, a short play over here yeah exactly so he oh wow that's cool dang i did not see that at all but yeah he can he should just block over here with like l's l's was his best play and then just go out with like dean on his next turn this is pretty foolproof uh he can also oh, apparently he can also outrun he can also just outrun with a two turn sequence and let me have hike that's interesting yeah, so he, I guess he just played Ansei, and Nasal wins. Wow, so he chose Ansei, but Nasal actually wins, because he gets more points for the E on his next turn than for the L. That's crazy, yeah, because he's going to play Joe next turn, and he only got five points for the L. Wow, so Hasty Bot really blew this quite badly, because yeah, he can actually just play in the same spot he did and win. Yeah, Nausea, or Nausea's, which is slightly better, is a really cool block, playing through this use already on the board, which, uh, I guess it lets me go out with Kyth, but it blocks Hike for the big score. So, actually, yeah, let's see after OI, if instead of OE, I played OI, if the nucleus of plays that he could have made, that win is a little bit smaller, just because Ket threatens to score more points than Hike. Okay, so Nasal would have tied here, because Nasal... And Joe is still the same sequence as before, but I'm netting five more points, right? Because Ket scores 60, whereas Hike scored 55. So, whereas he should have won by five by playing Nasal after OE, he actually would have tied here. And Ansei would have lost by five. But after OI, it's still pretty easy for him to win. He now can win with Sez, which wouldn't have won before, because I don't threaten Kyth to go out. Alang is his best play here, again, blocking my big play of Ket, and then saving ES, which is obviously going to go out in many places on this board next turn. So maybe a slightly trickier win for him after OI, just because he can't go for the straight-up outrunning approach. He does have to block in some capacity, whereas after OE, just because... 
Hike doesn't score as much, he can go for something like Nears or Garrisons or even just Nasal and outrun. So OI would have been a slightly better play, I think, in terms of inducing mistakes. But once once again, um, just to uh, emphasize this point, I was not winning in this position with optimal play from my opponent. However, as we saw, uh, he did not play optimally, and uh, I managed to somehow escape with a tie, 470 to 470. So really crazy stuff. I do want to quickly go through the earlier turns in the game, but I mostly want to focus on the end game there just because it was so crazy and interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's let's at least go back and take a look at the earlier stages. So here, uh, yeah, I could have played something like Ho. Not surprised that it ranks higher on Static from Hastybot. Hastybot also tends to really uh, not devalue high vowel leaves, which is always a little bit strange to me. Like it has EIO, for instance, as only about minus 1.5 since it's showing 14 scoring and 12.5 roughly valuation, which really just doesn't make sense to me. So not surprised to see Hastybot preferring playing a few tiles there, but I'm, I'm definitely good with exchanging. Yeah, again, I could have played OI, but I'd rather, for only four points, I'd rather not give back easy overlap plays, so I, I'm good with trading. He plays in, yeah, Intimay. Oh, Intimay is playable there, too. Uh, I didn't, for some reason, I think I only looked at it here. It's playable here, too, but again, I think for just one point, I'm happy to play Anti-Mine, because uh, I do give back a pretty big X spot over here if he, if he were to have pulled that, or also uh, a Q spot, potentially. So I think... Playing anti mine is is fine. It does give back floaters, but so does so does into May. I think it's sort of sort of a toss up. So yeah, maybe maybe a very small mistake, but I'm fine with anti mine here. He bingos with keratin. Uh, okay, yeah. So chiliasm is good. I was correct on that. Milchig clearly the better bingo. He scores well here. Yeah, curvy has got to be better than gravy. Again, I, I do block this G, but. I'm not too scared of it, especially with it being a blank G that's going to score zero points. And uh, A and Y is just so much better than U and Y that it's definitely worth it to take Curvy. He plays Flowey, Kintar clearly best. He bingos with Garrison, Yagui yeah, clearly best. A lot of my plays were pretty straightforward. This one was a little bit tricky. I, I did see tweeted, but once again, uh, he just played seven tiles. He's got a very good chance of having picked up at the minimum, like an F or an H or a P, and maybe even the Z or the K. And if he just scores 40 there, then I'll be down 50 on this board. Like, I'm pretty much dead at that point. Like, I think I need to be a little bit more cautious and accept that I'm going to be still playing from a deficit, but not allow him to just score a ton and make it back. So I think, uh, or make it back or uh, or even extend his lead further. So I think Tweed is fine here. Yeah, he plays Was, which probably is fine. I mean... Yeah, because you do have PU, and if you can pull one of the T's, you'll have putts. So I think was makes sense. And, oh, I missed I missed Axe for 47 here. Uh, hmm. Is I mean, should I actually play this, though? It keeps DTTV. I probably should, because if I pull one of the I's, I hit Dits. And it is a somewhat Val-heavy pull. I mean, with 15 Val's and 12 consonants. I, th I think I just got... Yeah, it's funny. I just got very hung up on not keeping all those consonants and trying to save my X for this spot. Like, I don't think it's a huge mistake. It's 21 is a lot of points, but like, obviously my scoring potential with TX is a lot better than with DTTV. The one reason I think X is probably still better is just because I do save the D as well. And that if I do draw either of the I's, I do hit dits. So that's probably enough of an upside that X is worth it, despite keeping that ugly DTTV leave. So, yeah, I, I just somehow didn't really even consider this, which is a little bit odd. But I feel like it's... I don't think it's a huge mistake, just because DTTV is so ugly. And it's going to take me probably a... I mean, even if I do hit dits, I'll still have the V after that. So it is nice to get rid of the V and, and save the X as well for the spot. I could also redraw Axe in the corner if I if I see it, which I, I don't know if I... I might have missed it again next turn, actually. Um, but, yeah, I think a small mistake here, but not a massive one. So he plays Pulau... Okay, I didn't miss X here. That makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, yeah, Box is pretty clearly correct. And then, yeah, this next turn... Oh, no. Oh, no. Shoot. Yeah, that's a game-losing mistake right there, guys. I just flat-out missed uh, missed Bhakti for 63 in the corner. Oh, boy. Yeah, that would have definitely won. I mean, going up 30 on this board, 100%. So, yeah, that's a pretty crushing... Miss not to not to see that in the corner. Um, yeah, I just didn't. I was not really looking for long words here. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I just I don't think I registered that that was a spot and that I could uh, 
I could play something there. I mean, I think I think if I saw the spot, I would have seen this word, but I just, uh, yeah, you know, I just didn't see it. So that's that's a shame. But uh, okay, so I, I definitely we both messed this one up. I I should have won by playing Bhakti, and then yeah, in this end game, he should have won by playing Nasal instead of Ansei or just blocking my outplay. So actually, uh, unfortunately, it turned out to be a pretty sloppy conclusion to the game from both myself and Hasty Bob. My, myself missing Bhakti in the in the pre-end game and then him not blocking my big play in the end game or not finding a better out in two sequence. So maybe fitting that this game ends in a tie given we both actually played pretty badly at the end. Um, but in any case, uh, it, it was a really good game and lo lots of fun plays. Uh, Milk Jig is always a, a cool word to get down. I don't know if I've ever actually played that in a game before. So that was good. And up until Bhakti, I think I played pretty well. Axe may be a small oversight, but generally speaking, until then, I was happy with how I played. So it's a, it's a shame that I let this one slip. That's a, that's a huge, huge mistake. I mean, 63 points is a massive score there. So that's too bad. But uh, but hey, at least we came away with a tie. So that's that's better than a loss. And yeah, still still a lot of good content there. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh yeah that is our first tie of the series so ties are always exciting it's uh it's always a shame when they result kind of like this one from both players making mistakes i don't know why i feel like often when i've tied it's it's been the result of like myself and my opponent both making a mistake which is the case here it's, it's always really cool when you get a tie where both players actually played really well and couldn't have won and the best they could both do was a tie uh, that's always cool but it's definitely rare unfortunately not the case here but um, but like I said, you know, probably fitting given neither neither of us played like we deserve to win at the end, and we got a tie. So, so there you have it, guys. Four seventy to four seventy is the final score in game number seventy three. Um, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week for game number seventy four. Thanks again, guys, and have a good one. Bye bye.